Welcome everybody to my lightning talk called Building Data Sharing Applications Using Node.js. So a little bit about myself. My name is Will Gerton. I'm a lead SSA at Databricks. I'm author of the Node.js connector for Delta Sharing, which is the basis for my talk today. I joined Databricks back in early 2019, and since then I've specialized in data warehousing and also performance tuning BI workloads on our financial services team. So you might be wondering why you should use something like Node.js to build real-time data sharing applications and not some other programming language or framework. Um, and let's take a look back in history. So here, you know, by a show of hands, has ever heard of GitHub or maybe use GitHub today? Okay, most of everybody, that's a good sign. I don't know how this talk would have gone if nobody raised their hands. Um, so let's take a, a look back in history at all of the top programming languages that have been used to create repos across GitHub. And as you can see by the visualization, the timeline stretches all the way back to 2014, spans up to the previous calendar year in 2022. So could anybody guess what the fifth top programming language was in 2022? I'm going to try my best to hear you. Oh, and by the way, I have some free t-shirts, so whoever's right, get a free t-shirt. Uh, if you guess C sharp, that was correct. What about the fourth top programming language? Any guesses here? I guarantee nobody will get it. If you guessed TypeScript, you were correct. All right, now we're just down to a handful of languages, so could anybody guess what maybe the third most popular language was for repos created on GitHub? If you guessed Java, you were right. And we're, last, we're down to the last two, so can anybody guess what the second top program language might have been for repos created on GitHub? Go ahead. Python, absolutely right. And if you guess that JavaScript was the most popular language used to create repos on GitHub for the past decade, you were also right, which is amazing. I, I also couldn't believe these results. So why is that? And the reason is that JavaScript is evolving beyond just a language for web application development and into a language for communicating data insights. So everyday tasks like data wrangling, data analysis, or even predictive analytics are all possible today within your browser. For example, the popular graphing library Plotly has their own JavaScript library as well for building rich visualizations using D3. And if you like deep learning, TensorFlow also has their JavaScript library for building ML models right within your browser. And last but not least, Danfo.js, which provides a pandas-like uh, interface for creating things like series or data frame data structures, or even uh, slicing arrays or even group by operations. These are all possible today from within your browser. All right, so I may have convinced you that JavaScript is a pretty prominent language, especially for the past decade, but you know, why use something like Node.js to build a real-time data sharing application? Well, there are a couple reasons. One is that Node.js is fast. It's built on top of the V8 JavaScript engine, which makes it ideal for both client and server-side scripting. Secondly, it's compatible, compatible with all operating systems, which means you can develop your application code once and run it everywhere. And last but not least, it's, it's built with scalability in mind. It's built around an event-driven, non-blocking I.O. model, which makes it great to handle a, a large volume of concurrent requests while still remaining responsive to the end user. So these things are all great, but where exactly does Delta Sharing fit into all this? So if you've never heard of Delta Sharing, it's basically the industry's first open data sharing protocol with a couple of goals in mind. One. We want to be able to share data without having to copy it outside of our data lake. Very important. Secondly, we want to be able to support a wide range of clients, like for example, our Node.js connector. Third, we want to have strong security, auditing, and governance, which is pretty important to every enterprise. And last but not least, we want to be able to efficiently scale as we share massive data sets into the terabytes and petabytes. So how exactly does it work? Well, the architecture is quite simple. We have a data provider on the left and a data recipient on the right. And in this case, our data recipient is using the Node.js connector in order to read shared data sets within our data lake. So the issue is sharing query. Maybe they want to look at our sales table. The Delta sharing server will evaluate the access permissions. And if all goes well, it will fetch the latest snapshot over Delta table. And it will do so by listing all of the files out in cloud storage that make up the latest snapshot. And this is the most important part. 
is that the Delta Sharing Server will respond with a list of short-lived file URLs, which is great because our data recipient can bring their own compute in order to read the data directly off the of cloud storage. And since none of the data actually traverses through a Delta Sharing Server, as a data provider, I don't have to worry about scaling out my compute as I onboard additional recipients and I deal with concurrent requests. And similarly, as the volume, data volume within our Delta tables grow over size, I don't have to worry about scaling it either. The great thing is that our data recipient can pay for their own compute, read the data files directly off the cloud storage, and it will scale to terabytes and petabytes of data. OK, so great. Awesome. We know that JavaScript is an evolving language, and we also know at this point that there's a Node.js connector for Delta sharing. But how exactly does this help us? Well, there's actually a pretty important problem that's worth solving here. And I, I work with a lot of different folks, and they have a variety of inputs, uh, input sources. They might be streaming sources, they might be batch sources, or they might be a combination of both. And they all land the raw data within the bronze layer. Maybe they do some transformations, some, apply some business rules, maybe some validation. And last but not least, it will end into a gold layer containing your aggregation tables, your feature tables. And this is kind of where things go wrong. So at some point, the business will want to build APIs or front ends in order to enable end users to interact with the latest data within their enterprise lake. So the way that they resolve this is once they realize that the data lake is great for running OLAP queries and not so good for running OLTP queries, they'll either copy all of the data or, or more commonly a subset of the data into NoSQL databases like Cosmos DB or DynamoDB. And this is exactly the hidden data maintenance trap that people get into. Because the data is not going to move itself, and the data in your lake is, should continue to update over time. So I get a lot of questions like, who maintains these additional data pipelines? Does it fall on my data engineering team, my data science team, my front end team? The data in the source is going to change, so that data needs to get updated. Who rebuilds these indexes? Or, more popular, is this additional infrastructure cost? The answer is yes. And last but not least, it, nothing happens instantaneously, so how long will it take to refresh the data and rebuild those indexes? These are all questions that arise, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. But the thing is, I see this problem all the time. Here, here's an example of an ML use case for a recommended architecture for ad placement prediction. Now, as you can see on the left, we're curating our data within the data lake, and then we're creating a copy of the data into a NoSQL database so that we can serve it up real-time predictions using a mobile or, or web application. But the thing is, how do you keep this copy inside of your NoSQL database up to date with the latest changes in your data lake? It doesn't happen for free. Here's another example of a real-time web application that makes two copies of the data, one into a data warehouse and another one into a Cosmos DB. The thing is that these redundant data copies are difficult to manage and also consume. And then last but not least, you don't think I was only going to pick on Azure here. Here's another example using DynamoDB of a popular fashion retail website that tout rich data science APIs. Who maintains all of these batch jobs? And the other thing too is if you want to make real-time predictions, there's nothing real-time about copying your data. It's difficult to manage. And that kind of leads me to my point here is that copying your data just creates silos within your organization, and it breaks things like data lineage. And it also makes things like doing strong data governance, auditing, or security difficult to, to manage. So how exactly can Delta Sharing simplify our architecture here? Well, in a couple ways. What if we instead still use our medallion architecture of raw, silver, and gold layers, but instead of copying out the final data into a key value store, what if instead we use Delta sharing to basically have an API layover of the latest data within our data lake, then we can enable front end systems that use Node.js or React to basically send shared queries to our Delta sharing server, read the latest data as it changes, and bring their own, comp their own compute. Then simultaneously, we can continue to update the data within our data lake. Maybe we're adding additional business rules, a validation logic. Maybe we're even doing batch predictions as well that data can all continue to change while simultaneously our front end or APIs can continue to read the latest data. Okay, that's awesome. So no copying my data, no having to build additional uh, data pipelines. So how do I get started? Do I have to build something from scratch? And the answer is no. Last week I announced a new Yeoman generator for Delta sharing. 
If you've never heard of Yeoman, back in the mid 14th century in England, it was basically a middle rank servant who owned and cultivated land. But Yeoman, the CLI tool, is basically a, ge a generic scaffolding system that allows you to create any kind of app quickly. And in this context, you can quickly generate either a Node.js backend or maybe a React app for doing delta sharing. It's easy to install. You can use the Node package manager, just say npm install generator delta sharing. And then from the command line, you can say yo delta sharing, select the type of the app that you want, give it a name, a brief description, some author details, and point it to the location of your delta sharing server. And then as you can see, it will download all the scaffolding code and install all the dependencies for you so you can get, quickly get up to running. Now, if you've never worked with React, React is an awesome uh, framework for building web or mobile apps, and it allows us to basically decompose your UI into one or more UI components. And each of these components have state tied to it. And the cool thing about React is that, like the name suggests, it can react to events like button clicks, expanding a drop-down menu, or maybe a page reload, and it will automatically magically update the state behind those components. So in this context, we can basically react to a button click, for example, and pull in the latest data within our data lake using our Delta Sharing APIs. And React will take care of updating each of the UI components with the latest metadata, maybe it's schema or uh, column partitioning information, or maybe it's the result set from a shared query. And it will automatically update the UI for us. So we can uh, quickly get up to running building a, a front end or an API while using the latest data within our data lake. And the good thing about this is that we're not copying the data. We're not adding any additional uh, data pipelines, and there's no headache. So I hope you found this, t this pretty interesting talk. If you'd like to learn the latest Lake House tips and tricks, please follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter, and now TikTok. Uh, stay tuned to my personal website, netregenalytics.io. I will be releasing a whole slew of uh, con learning content recent or shortly. And then if you found the, the Node.js connector for Delta Sharing interesting, or the Yeoman generator for Delta Sharing interesting, and you'd like to contribute, please feel free to reach out. I'd love to get, get working to, with you. Awesome. Thank you all for joining. Appreciate it.